Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about a QuickBooks how to on how to use QuickBooks for reporting. When you're entering transactions in QuickBooks, you're giving QuickBooks information. When you're running reports, you're getting information back from QuickBooks. You're taking all that information you've entered and you're organizing it in a way that it gives you useful information. So I wanted to show you two quick reports that I like to use, that I like to run and look at with my clients. And then I'm going to show you quickly how to get into the area of customizing your own report to get it very specific information. Of course, anytime we're doing any of this, we're in the reports menu in QuickBooks. So come over here and click reports. And I want to direct your attention down to some of the sales reports that I like to look at. Uh, two in particular. The first one is the sales by customer detail. And that's right over here. It's the second choice in the group. And when I run this, I'm in a sample company file, so I'm just going to run it for all dates. But you'll see as a business owner how very quickly how this gives you extremely valuable information. First of all, looking through this, you're going to recognize what's not here. As you go through this, this has been my experience working with lots of businesses, is that you'll go through here and you'll see as you're looking at this that there's something in your mind that triggers that tells you, I should be seeing something here that's not. And this very often happens, and it's often not because it's not been booked in QuickBooks, it just hasn't been categorized or classified correctly. So that kind of information is useful in terms of making sure that you've got the information organized the way it's supposed to be. You're also going to know better than I do when I'm looking at this report. As a business owner, you're going to know better based on what you are looking at when something doesn't look right. So you'll be looking at a report like this and you'll see, no, you know what, this doesn't belong here. Or, or you know what, this job, this construction job I did, the bathroom remodel, really should be broken up into two different segments. I'd like to see it reported that way better. And that's a matter of strictly of personal preference. There's no right or wrong. It's all how you would like to have the information reported back to you. And, and in terms of that, it's based on what, what is best going to give you the feeling that you have a good understanding of how your business is performing. And finally, this will give you powerful insight into what's working and what's not. Because as you go through this, you'll see by customer which of your services or products are selling. The things that aren't here are the things that aren't selling. And you very well may be aware of something that you thought would sell, that you thought more customers would be buying that thing or hiring you for that service, which might clue you into the, the possible fact that you need to advertise that more, or promote that more, or do something to increase awareness of that product or service. Doesn't mean the product or service is bad. Lots of great ideas go unnoticed. So this is a very good report to help you analyze what's going on with your business, looking at not just what is there, but what's not there, and thinking in terms of how can I get it there if, if I think it should be here. Next, I want to direct your attention to another sales report. So again, that's reports and sales. And we're going to look at the sales by item summary. The sales by item summary, similar to the sales by customer, is going to give you information specifically about which items are selling. Notice the first column here, it shows me how many I've sold in whatever date range, whatever time period I choose to look at this for. The other really valuable piece of information on here is the gross margin. You want to look through this and see which things are negative. Why are my exterior wood doors producing a negative gross margin here. That's something I need to look into. Either I'm not charging enough for them or there's something missing here. And there may be a reason why I'm taking a loss. Maybe I do this knowing I'm going to take a loss because there's such a big profit on the cabinet pulls. I don't know, I'm just making this up as I go. But you get the idea. You want to analyze this report, look at what it's telling you, and think in terms of what things you would expect to see that you don't, or what things look very different than what you would expect. Next, let's take a look at the sales by summary detail. So it's essentially the same report. The difference is instead of summary information, we're looking at details. We're looking at every single transaction that's on the books totaled by item. This is the sales by item detail. So we look at this and we see here's all the transactions for cabinet pulls, for light pine, for doorknobs, and so on and so forth. You want to look at this report and see, is it what you'd expect to see? Is there something you would expect to see here that's not? The same kind of thinking should go into this when you're running it. Now let's take a look real quick at running a custom transaction detail report. I'm going to close all these windows. And let's go to reports. And let's go to custom transaction detail report. Now let's say I just want to run it for this month. Notice we're on the display tab. This is where I choose what information I'm going to see in this report. 
And you'll notice here under the columns, there are things that are checked off. These are the items that by default QuickBooks assumes you're going to want to see on any report. You can uncheck them and check off the things that you do want to see if it's not exactly what you'd like. But let's say we want to run a report that shows all the banking for this past month for every single bank account. Well, we'll start with the, same, with the standard default items that it chooses to show me, and you'll see that we can go back in afterwards and change that. But let's go to the filters, because the filters are where we start restricting what information we see. On the display, we're telling QuickBooks, this is what I want you to show me. Filters is where we're going to QuickBooks and we're saying, I want you to limit what you show me to these things. So in terms of that, if the example is that we want to look at all the banking for this month, then instead of all accounts, I want to limit my accounts filter here to just all bank accounts. And that is one of the presets here. But if I wanted to look at one specific account, I have that choice too. I can come in here and choose any single account. I can also choose multiple accounts and just you know, specifically select. I want to see this account, this account, this account, and so on. But if I want to see all bank accounts, I just use the preset for all bank accounts. But now I want to stop for a minute and think, what's this going to look like? Is it going to be meaningful information for me to see one report with a running stream of transactions no matter what bank account they were in? Probably not. So I want to go back to the display tab, which again is where I tell QuickBooks how I want you to present the information to me. And instead of showing one group of transactions with one total, I probably want to total this as an account list so it shows each account separately. Let's click OK and let's see what this looks like. Sure enough, I start off with this checking account. And as I scroll down, it comes to the end. And then it shows me a couple of transactions from the savings account. So now you get the picture that when I total it by account list, it shows me each account in its own group. Now the other thing that's important to understand here is this is not the balance of my account. So this is a column we probably would not want to include on a report like this because it can be a little misleading. Notice that going into the top, there's no previous balance rolling in. So these numbers, and you can also see that I see a check for 71115 and then right away it starts me off with a balance of negative 71115. That tells me that there's no consideration here for any of the activity prior to December 1st, 2015 which means that this is not giving me anything really meaningful. At the end of the day, it's just giving me the net net of all the transactions I'm looking at. So the, the most meaningful information I can pull out of this is that at the end of the day, this is telling me that during the past month, I've spent $8,600 more than I took in. And maybe that is meaningful, but it's important to understand that that's what the information is telling me if I'm going to leave it there. I've often run this report without you know, highlighting that or otherwise taking this column out. And you know somebody looks at this and says to me, well, my balance isn't negative 8,600, is it? So especially as a consultant, I've learned to be careful about what information I present because it can give somebody the wrong idea and frankly send them into a panic, especially if they see negative 8,600 and negative 25,000 in their accounts. So it's very important to understand. Now, if I wanted to see that with the balance forward, what I can do, and this is the last thing I'll show you for now, is I can run a standard balance sheet and I can double click an account so I'll just choose the checking and then I can change the date range so that we're looking at the same information but run this way notice it does give me the balance forward and there's my same 71115 going in but now I have my true account balance so now I can go to my client or my customer or you as the business owner and say this is your real balance in the account as of December 15, 2015 so this is some information that hopefully you find helpful. A little QuickBooks how-to on QuickBooks reports, customizing your reports in QuickBooks and how to start doing that. As always, if you have any questions, email me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. If you'd like more information about this or any other topic you see me cover, give me a call at 866-945-8070, and I'll be happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one private training with you. Again, that's 866-945-8070, or send me an email to seth at nerdenterprises.com.